All right, so I've got it hooked up. I've got the battery. I just plugged the battery up. Here's the key and the ignition. Let's see if it does anything. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Rebuild It. This week I think we're finally going to solve the missing mileage mystery. So do me a favor and hit the pause button right now and put your guess down below in the comment section what do you think the mileage is on this T2. And no cheating. And then we'll see who gets closest to the end of the video. Okay, I don't think I've mentioned it before, but there is something that smells like something dead on this car. And when you start it and it gets hot, it really stinks. I mean, it doesn't smell like a electrical thing. It smells like a dead rat or something. So it smells like in this area in here, really bad. So I took this fender off and I'm trying to look around over there and see if I see anything. Anyway, you can stay over to this side, it's not too bad, but... So the first thing I'm gonna do is, on this interior to get ready to start putting it all back together, is I need to get a lot of that rust. And like I said, it's just surface rust, but I don't like it, so I'm gonna... I don't think I'm gonna paint it, because I know a lot that's left um, non-painted because of grounds and stuff, so... I don't wanna take a chance on messing that up. I'm, I've got this little ball here scuff ball I'm gonna go around with the drill and just try to get the biggest flakes off of it and then um, you know, I'll vacuum all that up and then I've got this stuff which is evapo rust which I've used the liquid version of this for years and man it works good but you have to put the part all the way in it submerge it in it matter of fact those two pieces that I already that I took off they're down there soaking in it right now this is a gel and we're gonna paint it on there after I scuff it up some and let it sit for a couple hours and then wipe it all down. I'll have some plastic under it before I put that on and uh, hopefully that gets most of that off. So that's what it looks like after about 15 minutes. I'm supposed to leave it on there for like, it says one to two hours. So leave it on there and then we have to come wipe it off with a wet rag. You're supposed to be able to rinse it, but we can't rinse it in there. So we'll wipe it off with a wet rag and just look at all the smoke that is still in here. All that, that stuff was two layers, under two layers of dash and it's just, I mean, the smoke gets just absolutely everywhere, look at that. So, we'll wipe all that stuff down, get all the smoke out and the, and then the rust stuff. But man, it's working fast, isn't it? I also did this piece out here. Oh, that was really bad rust right all around that. So, I can at least rinse that. Okay, so it's been sitting two hours. So now, now I'm gonna get a wet cloth and wipe all that down. And then I'm probably gonna spray it with uh, WD-40, just because WD-40 is, WD stands for water displacement, if you didn't know that, just to keep any kind of uh, the moisture that I've got on there from rusting it right back, you know, a real fine coat of rust. So let's wipe her down, see what it looks like. All right, so here it is after it's been cleaned of the chemical. And you can see there's still, like it looks like that black, 
stuff was the deep corrosion stuff, but it was it's neutralized now, I think. So I'll go ahead and uh, wipe it down a little bit more, and then I'm gonna spray it with WD-40. And here's the one I did out here that's been drying. You can see it's got just like a little fine layer of corrosion since I washed it. So I'll spray it with WD-40. And now I'm gonna go ahead and also and start wiping down all of the black junk on everything. And just to prove I've cleaned out more smoke. Black water. <laughs> okay, so I decided while I was this far, I'll go ahead and remove this back panel. They call this the waterfall panel. And uh, there's two corner pieces. I should have shown you while I was doing it, but there's a corner piece here, a corner piece over there, and then a center piece. And that uh, cup holder that goes in the middle of that that comes out was damaged, I think, too much by fire to clean, but I'm gonna try it here in a minute. So the only way to get that out is to take that panel off and get it from the back. So it's just good, it's gonna be good to clean anything that I can get smoke stains off of, you know, let be less chance of it smelling once we get it all back together. So I'll vacuum all this stuff up and then wipe it all down. I think that might be, I'm not sure what these pieces are. Um, Continental, I don't know if that's part of the satellite or the OnStar or what that stuff is right there. Anyway, I'm gonna clean it and get it all desmoked. All right, so all that is cleaned up and washed. I don't know of anything else in the interior that can be cleaned that I can get to. So I think this is finished with the uh, desmoking. Um, the only other thing I know of cleaning wise is the backs of these seats, which I need to shampoo. And uh, then, and actually I might wait till it cools off a little bit before I do that, but I might go ahead and start putting like that big panel back in. Um, I cannot put this panel back in until I find a cup holder. Cause that one is not, I would have to try to paint it to make it uh, look black again. I don't really want to do that. I'm sure I just replace it. So I need to find that. And I've got to find this uh, dash pan or panel, which that one is not broken, but the more I scrubbed on it, the paint started coming off. And so it's not, I'd have to repaint it. And I'm not, I could do it, but I'm not, I want to make a, have a perfect match. I'd rather have just another one. So. That has to be replaced, the cup holder, and it seems like there was one other thing. Oh, the little grab handle. So I need to find those things. The rest of this is all, <laughs> look at all that junk. <laughs> the rest of this is all repair or replaceable. There's nothing broke. So, and there's all, all the smoke is gone and should not be any smell. I don't see how there could be smell left in, in here. So. The only smell is the dead thing that I can't find. Okay, so everything's dry in here. I went ahead and also uh, shampooed the back of the seats. They're nice and clean. Ooh. And uh, so now I'm gonna just set the driver's side seat back in here where I can have something to sit while I work on the dash. And we'll have to, that steering wheel is just in there with one nut. So we'll set that back down again and put the uh, inner, dash back on the support dash and the trick to that is remember where all these wires come through it so i have to look at my pictures i took and try to figure that out and once we get that on we'll start bolting it all up
All right, so I think I'm ready to put in the actual dash. I did remember that this metal piece down here does not get bolted in until after that upper dash is in because it goes on top of it. So let's put, put the dash in, then we'll get the steering wheel, snap it all back together. moving right along here we can we've got the dash pad back in and can't do the, the gauge um, trim yet until we get the new new one in I think I found a guy that has one uh, can't put the console around the emergency brake in until we get the back in put back in I can't put that in until we get the new cup holder I do have some stuff I can put back on underneath the steering wheel and um, then we can do all the area up around the uh, windshield. All the trim up there can go back. Well, I've got just about all of it back together that I can do. And guess what I just saw? It has to be put on from underneath the dash. So all this has to come back off. There's no way to get that stupid thing in there that I can figure out. Okay, so I did throw six conniption fits, but I did get it back apart. And I only had to take really like three quarters of the screws out because I was able to get it pulled out enough to get my hand back up in there and get that thing back in without taking all that side off. So it is back together and I don't know of anything that's not hooked back up that, except for the things that I'm waiting on. So, all right. So while I'm waiting on parts, I'm going to go ahead and give this thing its first wash. And it, cause it is still like every time I lean over it towards the center of the hood or anything, I get this all over my pants. <laughs> so stuff like, in, I took this fender off, so it's still like got lots of smoke all in there and stuff. So I'll wash the outside, go ahead, we'll go ahead and get everything off the windshield and um, get the top back up and put the, and it's not ever been clean. So hopefully it's as good as I think it is, but let's clean it up. Well, for some reason my camera kicked off in the middle of that wash, so. <laughs> Just have to dry it off, but got it washed. This car has got to be extremely low miles. I mean, there's not even like the wheels are immaculate. There's not a speck, a spot on that uh, soft top. The only damage I find on this thing is probably what happened in the fire. Like a couple gashes in this headlight here and the ones in the bumper that we already talked about. This is probably from the forklift, the, the co-part. And then I see a couple things that had to be probably from the fire, stuff falling on it from the garage. So there's a scratch through this or in this decal. So that really stinks because I'm sure these decals are not uh, available anymore. So I wish they were, if they were, then I would definitely buy a set because that would make it a lot easier on Mike if he paints this bumper 
then you can just replace those two pieces right there and take everything off and do the whole thing instead of trying to blend. So uh, I'll do some research on that. If anybody knows about decals, I don't want any that's that are reproduced. I want some OEM ones to make sure they really match. If they do, then all I got to do is take off the center piece here and replace it. This other one is perfect over here. So, and the back ones are perfect. There's just, this just can't have had many miles on it. All right, this long awaited item is here finally. This should be the gauge cluster for the T2 I've been waiting on. Okay, so here we have the new cluster. Ooh. Here's the other one over there on top of that pull roller rack. Okay, so when I bought this cluster, this came from a salvage yard or somewhere. And in the salvage yard photo, it shows the cluster coming off of a 57,285 mile car. Okay, so when we're doing this car, we have no idea what the mileage is on this, if you remember. And I've got the BCM fixed over there in the floorboard, I hope. And the question was whether this thing will communicate with the BCM and put the mileage on the gauge cluster that is the original miles to this car. So if we plug this in, there can be three things that can happen. It can still show nothing, which means that it wasn't the gauge cluster is the problem to start with. And we have some other communication problem on the car. Or second option is it can be, it can show the 57,285 miles on here, which means that it's still got the mileage on here from the car that I just bought this off of and it will have to be reprogrammed to the RBCM or the third option is all of a sudden it could pop up the correct mileage with this car which is what we all hope for so let's plug it in hook up the battery stick the key in it see what happens all right so I've got it hooked up I've got the battery I just plugged the battery up there's the key in the ignition let's see if it does anything well, it lit all up. Yes, Solstice GXP. Now, what's the mileage? Door jar. Come on, show a little miles. Service airbag. Let's see if we can get this thing to say okay. 17,819. <laughs> I knew it was low miles. It just had to be with all the, uh, the good, how everything looks so good on it. Wow. So now let's start this thing up and see if we've got the gauge working. All right. So we've got RPMs. We've got a little less than a quarter tank of gas. We've got an airbag light on. And I think that was, oh, it's because we don't have the airbags so the seats are out. So hopefully that'll go back off when we hook the seats back up. So that's awesome, 17,819. Let's see if there's anything else on here. Needs an oil change. We'll have to reset it with our uh, little scanner to so it picks up the tires and pressure, hopefully. Boost. That's awesome. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Rebuild It. Hope you enjoyed it. What did you think about the mileage on the car? Were you close on your guess? Um, I guessed about 20,000 and it was a little less than that. So I'm, I'm pleased with it. So, uh, if you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up below. And last time I checked, we were less than 20 subscribers away from hitting our thousand goal. So if you're not subscribed, please consider doing that and you'll really help the channel. So we'll see you next week. Thanks again for watching. And always remember, don't retire it if you can rebuild it. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in and watching this week's episode of Rebuild It. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any awesome content. Have a good one.